at uh, the superintendent's report. Dr. Bolson. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. And thank you everyone for a deep conversation around that. The whole, it is such an important topic and I wanted to be sure that we addressed it uh, with some with some depth. And I think that's, that's occurred well this evening. Um, so let me, let me move on to a few different topics. Uh, I know it's late, but I have a, a couple things I really wanted to hit. So board members talked about their experiences with graduations this morning. Uh, the in-person graduation experiences did start today. I think what was most notable for me, I had the chance to attend the graduation exercises at Bel Air High School and Hobby de Grace High School. And in both places, the school had something that was kind of reflective of their traditions. Bel Air had their rose arch, which is something that is, I guess, become standard at their graduations. Uh, the one thing they have to do about that is they're replacing it to have a fresh one every day this week. Uh, and of course, if you've ever been to uh, a graduation at Javier de Grace, probably the thing that stands out the most is the uh, presence of Silly String, which of course was there today. And uh, so again, and I heard the other board members talk about some of the, the special elements of the graduations. It was really nice to see those. This evening, the digital commencement celebrations were released on the YouTube channel. So for folks who haven't had a chance to go over and see those, I, I got to see how the speech came together and, and how we go through all the students' names and the speeches from our students. Those were released at five. They're there for um, all of our schools. And so those are open for anyone to see on our YouTube page. On a different topic, uh, this past week we announced the recipients of our Growing Exceptional Teachers Scholarships. We have five teachers coming forward, so one of the ways we will continue to add folks into our teaching pipeline. We have we have many other things, and again, we were having slightly richer conversations about this before we were interrupted with uh, this pandemic. Um, but I am excited about some of the things still moving forward for next year, looking at the um, the. Maryland, uh, the, the teacher program that will, we have the new section starting at Edgewood next year. And so on another, with regard to the recruitment efforts, um, we're still hiring. We, as you approved this evening, we have many new positions coming in the district. So even if they're not, so there's the teacher positions that we're adding. Um, we know we have vacancies in teacher positions, but we also know some of the other positions there um, teachers may move into and it will create other vacancies. So we have stuff on social media. Any way you can help us uh, with our recruiting would be great. Um, a quick note, Harford Cable Network has started airing lessons uh, from Harford County Public Schools. Uh, right now they're on Thursdays at one and five. They'll be going through the, through the month. Uh, we hope to see that grow um, down the road, particularly if we find ourselves in any sort of interruptions. Um, so we're excited to see that get going. I also want to take a second. We heard some comments with suggestions about um, recovery planning and how we will how we will do instruction in the fall. Uh, there's no question. There's a great deal of planning going on around that, and there have also been many many questions. Uh, Dr. Phillips, I think, did a nice job of laying out that the decision making isn't all ours. Um, but what we will have, and the the target is to begin releasing the draft version of this. Um, before the end of the month is we're looking at providing a plan that shows people how instruction would look in Harford County Public Schools uh, in the various stages of the governor's uh, roadmap to recovery plan. Um, so we know we're currently in stage two and there are some uh, restrictions and perimeters that come with that. So if we remain in stage two going into the fall, uh, we'll, we will show you what that looks like. Um, and of course, one of the key elements of stage two is that uh, there's still restrictions on group sizes. And so we will have to create a schedule that only creates a certain size group in our schools. And there's a lot of things that come with that. Um, if we are in stage three, which is the, uh, the final version of the governor's plan, uh, that's when we start looking at the option of possibly being able to have all of our students in one place. And so again, we will describe uh, how that will look if we are in stage three. We have a couple of months to get there. Uh, it's hard to know what the changes are going to bring and um, what what the governor will be announcing. Uh, but we will have plans to show you what it looks like if for some reason we need to be in full distance learning. In other words, we're not either either not able to open our schools or something occurs. We have a resurgence and we may need to close for some period of time. We will we'll we'll describe that for folks. 
Um, then, of course, what it looks like if we remain in stage two, which is where we are now, that is the reduced class size uh, that leads to some severe restrictions on our schedule. Uh, but then if we um, uh, if we are in stage three as a state, that will give us much more flexibility uh, in getting us back into school. So uh, more to follow on that soon. Um, but that is that is a hard thing because, you know, building a master schedule in a school, whether it's elementary or high school, you start the work in about November and you're still working hard on that in August. And right now, uh, I know it might seem simple in the era of computers that we press a button and schedules are developed, but it's it's it just isn't there. Uh, that, that technology doesn't exist. We're now producing at least four different schedules in about a third the time we would normally uh, schedule for um, opening either in late August and in September. So there's a lot going on around that. Uh, we will have more information and we will have opportunities for the community to see and provide feedback on that before it becomes finalized. Um, so more to follow in a couple weeks. And uh, finally, on what I think has really been the most important topic that's hit us on the last few weeks, um, I want to lead into this with um, you've seen some of the Lead with Love uh, initiative announcements coming out. You've seen videos being posted on our social media. Um, so watch for those. We have a real talk. Uh, you've seen the real talk, which has been the, that's really out of our parent academy, but there'll be a real talk episode on the Lead with Love initiative. Uh, and so what I'd like that to serve as a segue into a conversation about race. I, I released a statement Earlier this week, um, many of the board members have made very powerful comments tonight, so I'm, I'm, I don't want to repeat that, uh, but just know that I absolutely stand with them as well. What I did the Listen and Learn tour coming into the school district in 2018, one of the topics, uh, feedback from the black community, I heard a great deal about race. There had been some incidents in, in the in the time before I got here, uh, historically, a lot of challenges around race. But one of the topics that resonated most with me is that our students weren't seeing themselves in the curriculum, that our attention to the experience of, of um, our black students or any black students was not attended to well in our curriculum. Um, and it depended a little bit on the teacher. And in some cases, uh, some teachers did a better job with this. In other cases, um, we didn't go as deep. And I really don't believe we as a system can do a good job demonstrating how Black lives matter if we don't do a better job addressing their experiences within our curriculum. That's something we have power over, and that's something we will be working on and improving. Um, we need to bring those voices forward. We need to help people understand um, that, I think as someone said this evening, Black Lives Matter, I think it was Christian's statement, that's that's the starting point, that's the minimum. Um, and I think we've seen uh, so many great expressions of solidarity and, and explanations of just why the anger is there and what we need to do about it. Um, so board, I appreciate the sentiments you shared this evening. And um, I also want to thank Christian and our incoming student board member, Phoebe, for coming with the idea of essentially surveying our students. Because having a better understanding of the experiences of our individual students, I'll go back to the, what we've talked about with regard to North Star. North Star is founded, I mean, the premise of North Star is that we're advancing all students. But in order to do that, we have to eliminate barriers. And if our students aren't able to come to school in a safe environment, if some of our students um, in particular experience a more um, non, uh, um, a more harassing environment or an environment where they can't feel safe, we're not, a, we're not re removing the barriers we need to remove for them to be successful. And so, with that said, I think the survey, I think the information we collect, we will treat it like other work we've done. Um, the survey will be coming from them. They've designed the questions, um, but then we can help with some of the system resources to ensure that beyond the survey, we create space for things like focus groups and follow up to the data so that what we learn from that survey can actually lead to 
policy recommendations, can lead to improvements in our curriculum, can lead to uh, better work around student discipline, around all of those things that come out when we start talking about race. So again, thank you for your comments this evening. Christian, in particular, uh, thanks to you and to Phoebe for getting uh, this initiative started. And just know that we are working, uh, we'll be working very deliberately and very aggressively on creating a safer space for all of our students. So with that, thank you. Uh, we will see you in two weeks. Have a great night. Thank you, Dr. Bolson. Um, our next meeting is June 22nd at 6.30 p.m. And this meeting is adjourned.